Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for LearnFX and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. So this week we're going to be making some more cinematic titles. Like this one is going to be more of an action type title than the other ones. The other ones had some different styles of cinematic titles, but I think it's about time that we make an action style title. So let's take a look at what we're going to make. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the project settings and I'm going to change the resolution since this is going to be a very heavy project. I think I'm going to be making it like 1280 by 720 HD video format, HD 720, 24 frames a second. And that's our frame rate, 24 frames a second. You can make it any format you want, any resolution, 4K, full HD, HD, it doesn't matter. It's just I'm doing this to make it go a little bit smoother for the tutorials. I'm going to click save. Now we need to right click on our media pool, create a new fusion composition, 5 seconds long is great, so we're just going to create that, and we are going to drag this onto our timeline. Select the composition, and we can head over to the fusion tab. So here we are in our fusion tab, we're going to take our media out node, drag it to the corner, and right click anywhere on the flow and go to arrange tools make sure to check to grid and options i'm going to select like always orthogonal pipes and there's one thing i forgot to mention in my previous tutorial about the doctor strange style particle portal is that actually fusion was the main compositing software used on the film doctor strange so something i forgot to mention last week so we should get started i'm going to grab a text plus node and I'm going to select font Cyberdyne and I'm going to provide the link in the description for this font. I really like this one. I think it isn't the first time we're using it in this channel. So I'm just going to type something like trailers and the last, the first and last letter should be, should be uppercase because the font is a little bit different in the beginning and the end. So one thing also that I discovered finally that, as you know, I'm a big fan of the standalone version of Fusion and not the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve. But one of the reasons was that there was no high quality button in the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. Well, at least not, not obvious for anyone to just go and click it. And that's what causes the playback to be slower. Well, that's one of the things that causes the playback to be slower in DaVinci Resolve. But I finally found it. And to show you where it is, you just need to right click here on this bar. And here you have high quality and it's set to on by default and that causes the playback to be a lot slower we turn off motion blur and one thing left is to turn on auto proxy and that is going to make the playback a lot faster so i'm going to bring up the size of this font something like this i think we make it a little smaller and we go into the shading tab and shading we are going to select image now it's time to bring in one of our project files. And this is this texture. And this texture was actually made in Fusion. So if, any, if there's any interest in this, I can make a follow-up tutorial on how to make this texture. So if we look at the text, it looks like this. So I'm just going to right click again on the viewer and turn options, turn off the checkered underlay so we can actually have some more contrast of what we're looking at. So after this media, in node i'm going to add a transform node and edges i'm going to select mirror and the size i'm going to bring it down that just adds some more fine detail to our text maybe just a little bit larger just just a little bit like that yeah so as you can see that it maps here in the text node that it maps it per letter I'm not sure if it says this anymore here, mapping level character, or you can set it to full image, or text, or to line, or to the word. But character is fine. Basically, it means that it's going to take this media, and every letter is going to be textured according to the picture instead of as a whole. So that's fine. So one more thing is we need to go here. After the transform, we're going to add a brightness contrast node. I believe it's this one. 
and we're going to bring down the saturation just a little bit but this is like an overly overly saturated image just a little bit to give this bronze look we can add some more i guess maybe bring up the contrast a little bit and then bring the saturation down a bit more so yeah you play with these so you get something that you like so i'm going to get a copy of this text node you could just do Control C, Control V. I'm just gonna paste it here under it, and let's just keep things organized. Let's keep everything moving in the vertical instead of horizontal. That way, it'll take less space. So here's our second text, and here we're going to go back to the shading tab, and we are going to change this from image to gradient, and set this to the viewer, by the way. And the gradient, we should add a, make it like this, add another point, something like that. We can make it dark. We can make it dark light, dark light, like four point gradient. Just to make it look like there's actually a reflection going on. So you just play around with these points till you get to the point that you actually like. But we aren't really going to be seeing much of this. So here it is. We aren't going to be seeing much of it, so I'm just going to merge these two together. And I'm just going to zoom out. And I'm going to do Control T to put this one on top. And if I, let's see, if I move this to the side a little bit, you're going to see that it's like almost extruded like look. But we probably shouldn't do that. I'm just going to set this to default. Yeah. Pardon me, I'm still getting used to the whole uh, inside the Vinci Resolve Fusion thing. So, so we go to the beginning of our title and we bring up the tracking and remember the number. So we go back to the text tab and bring up the tracking. I'm just going to look at one so it'll be faster. I'm just going to bring up the tracking just till it gets to the very edge like as much as we can honestly that should be fine 1.38 so i think 1.1.386 i think 1.39 should be fine just so we don't use these tiny numbers we just moved it a little bit so it's not not a big deal you know i think 1.4 also wouldn't be such a big deal either yeah see it's like right on the edge and the reason we don't want to get it out of the edge is because we're going to crop it and then when we're going to bring it back, we won't have that detail that we want. So in this, we're all also going to go into the tracking and bring it to maybe, not the tracking, sorry, 1.41. 1. Let's see what that looks like. And it actually comes out of the frame a little bit. So if we look at it here, when they're merged on top of each other, you can see it looks a little bit extruded, and that's what we want. It's okay if it comes out like this, this much out of the frame isn't isn't a big deal because we're also gonna be adding some lens distortion to this. I'm just gonna control S to save this because you always wanna save your work. So to the tracking, I'm going to add animate, right click and select animate, or you can click on this diamond button. We didn't have this diamond button in the standalone version, but it's okay. So yeah, it makes things easier actually. So, and we're going to go to frame, this is a five second composition, so I think we should go to frame about, I don't know, anywhere somewhere towards the end, you know, like maybe towards frame 100. And I think we'll go to frame 80. And we're going to bring the tracking back to where it was here and here. And we go to the second text and we just add a little bit to make it. A little bit more but that's too much 1.1 so we can make it 1.01 we'll see how that looks yeah perfect yeah so if we look at this if we play this animation yeah, the playback is still slow but uh but that's not really a problem so next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring another text plus node, just a text node basically, 
and we're going to type our second text. So I'm just going to type maybe cinematic. Yeah. So we're going to send this to the viewer, second viewer. And this font really doesn't look cinematic at all. So I'm going to choose a font called Bank Gothic. I think that looks actually quite nice. There are other fonts you can try. I, and um, I'll provide the link to this font in the description as well. Uh, there are other fonts you can try, maybe like, I don't know, Astra. That also looks quite nice. But I think, yeah, I think maybe we can stick with Astra actually. So once again, we're going to copy this, this whole thing here. We're going just to copy this, paste it here. And this one isn't going to be animated with the tracking. So there isn't really much, there isn't really much work to do in this one. So I'm just going to go back into the shading, change the, change this to image, send this image into here. And we have this. Yeah, here it is. And it's actually scaled it too much. So I should probably get rid of this transform. Yeah, turn off the checkered underlay. It's actually very annoying when it comes to bright text like this. So we might want to bring down the saturation a little bit more on this one. Bring down the brightness. Oh no, not that, not that far. Now we can make this text bigger and then scale it down later. For you, you know, the point of this is to make it map normally, and then once it's mapped, we just we just shrink it down. It needs a little bit extra detail, and I've we've covered this earlier on why we do this. So I'm just going to take a copy of this, paste one here. Set the shading type to gradient again, and we're going to bring this dark point here, add another two points. This one we make it white, this one we make it darker. Maybe we should actually be looking at our text, just might help a little bit. So we bring this up. Yeah, it looks something like this. Nice gradient. Yeah, this needs to be definitely higher. It's on towards the middle. So that's nice. We're going to merge one on top of the other now. Send this to the viewer. And we're just going to bring up the tracking on this one a little bit, even though we're not going to be animating the tracking. So it should be 1.0.02 maybe. 0 0.01 would be fine. Yeah, 0 0.01 because it's also too much. Yeah, so we have something like this extruded text. So Control S again to save because we wouldn't want to lose this again. So that's about it for the text. So we're going to merge this together. I'm going to send this to the viewer. And now is about time to change the position. So we should probably bring this up. Bring the scale down by a lot. Yeah. Here it is. And I think we mapped this a little bit too much. So we just bring, go to the transform and bring it a little bit larger. Yeah. So that looks fine. And what we want to animate is the merge node. So we want to go to frame about, I don't know, 48 maybe. And we are going to go to the blend. Okay, I forgot that we have this. And we are going to bring this to zero. So you don't see this at all. You go to maybe, I don't know, 54, maybe a little bit forward, 56 would be fine, maybe to make it smooth. And we bring the blend up again. Yeah, so here it is. And maybe we should click this position because it's a little bit too high. So control S. So that's about it for the text. And we have a few assets that we should bring in. 
One of them is this background, and I'm going to show you how to make this right now. I just pre-rendered it for it to be a lot easier for us to work with it. And we have these elements. Should probably rename this so we don't get confused. This one we're going to rename, make it background. Okay. This one is going to be smoke. At least it looks like smoke. It doesn't look like fog as they wrote. And I'm gonna provide the link to all of this in the description. And this one we're going to write amber. Yeah, so that's going to be easier to work with. Now, this background was also created in Fusion. It's a very nice looking cinematic background. And I'm going to show you how, to, how I made it. It's actually quite simple. So first we take an image plane 3D. We take a spotlight 3D. And we're going to merge this together. We just pipe it over and create some merge 3D. And after that, we're going to add a render 3D. And we're also going to add another spotlight. Ugh, I hate when it does that. Yeah, automatic, but merge 3D, you can merge a lot of objects to it. So, so basically, like, if you're familiar with Nuke, I'm pretty sure it's like the scene node. So I'm just going to look at this here. Right click, go to 3D options, turn on the lighting, and Alt to move around. Now, the first light, we'll just connect, disconnect this one. So this is actually the second light, so we bring it back. So we have this, like a big, big spot looking thing. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't a spotlight. We don't need a spotlight. I'm just going to cut this, cut this one as well. We need a point light, sorry. Mix those two up once in a while. So point light. All right, here's our point light. And we're going to add this to the merge. We're going to bring this back a little bit. And we should probably clear up this viewer so it'll be fast. And we bring this towards the top like that. Set the color something around blue and bring down the intensity because it's way too intense. And now we're just going to copy this, paste it here, bring that right there. And for the second one, we're going to bring it down and set the color to red. Now, if we look at this in the Merge 3D, we have a white square. But the problem is when you go to our Merge 3D and enable lighting. So we have this, but it's too, how do you say, it? it's too small. So I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to pipe it into the Merge 3D. It's a camera 3D node, so I'm just going to look at our Merge 3D and render 3D in the other window. So Alt, and I'm going to bring this back until, all right, until there. and. That's basically it. It has it has a very realistic fall off, like real lights. And the render 3D, you can set the image to float 16. The depth, sorry. That's where it is. Float 16. And you can render this out. You can add a brightness contrast node after this and bring down the saturation. So we have something like this. I'm just going to cut all of this. I you might you have to pre-render this. So you just so like you know the best way to pre-render is if you only need one frame, you just right click on the view and you go to save image. You click on this and you choose where you want to save the file. If you just want to save one, one still, that's actually the best way to do it. If you have to pre-render a whole like image sequence, then that's not that's not worth it. But basically, this is how we make our background. Is going to cut all of this out of the picture. Here's our background. And we're going to merge our text on top of our background. Let's see what we have here. And our background, I forgot, is actually 4K. So we need to scale this down. You would need to scale it down. You would probably just leave it as it is. So I'm going to just look at this instead of looking at it with the text. So here it is. I'm going to scale this down. 
too far. It was 1280 by 720. I'm just going to click on control and move this and this gives you more control over it. Yeah, so this is basically as close as we're going to get. I think. Yeah, 1280 by 720. That's so it's 0 0.333 apparently. That's the ratio to get from 4K to to 720. So here it is. We have this. We're going to send this to our merge node. And we have this. This is way too saturated. So I'm just going to add a BC node after this. Bring down the brightness. Not that far. Of course, not that far. Bring it like that. And bring down the saturation. We bring the brightness back to where it was, and we just need to bring down the saturation. Very subtle coloring. Very subtle. Shouldn't be too much. Very subtle. Yeah. So here's that. And for the smoke, now we are going to look at it in the viewer. This smoke is also 4K. So to scale it down, I'm just going to copy this. Control C to copy. Control V to paste, and here's our scale. It's exactly the right size now. But one thing you'll notice if I set this to the beginning, this thing is really, really slow. It's not that the playback is slow. It's playback is decent. It's like one and a half frames a second. But the actual smoke is very slow. It moves like a snail. So I'm going to go Control Space Bar, and I'm going to add a time speed node. Time speed. And click on add. And I think we should bring up the speed. I'm not exactly sure how long the original clip is. But I think we bring up the speed to about six times what it was. That makes it a lot faster. Let's just make sure that it doesn't end by the end of the composition. All right. So to this, we're going to add a little bit of coloration. So I'm going to add a color corrector node, and I'm going to bring it a little bit towards the red. And one more thing, I'm just going to move everything to make it nice and clean. After the color corrector node, I'm going to add a transform node from this toolbar, and I'm going to make it flip, flip vertically. Yeah, so now the smoke is coming from the bottom to the top. That's nice. Yeah, and the red probably wasn't the best color for smoke. I'll tell you that. Probably should have made it something like a orange tan color. Something like that. Yeah, so that should be fine. We move this to the side. And the last thing here is the amber. And the amber, I think, is the only thing that we don't have to retime or rescale. I don't remember what size it was, though. It's 1920 by 1080, so we should probably scale this down also a little bit. Not a scale. All right. So I'm not exactly sure how far you have to scale it to make it 1280 by 720. Yeah, it's for uh, HD, full HD. So here we are. And this is our embers. These are embers. So basically, we're almost done here. Just uh, let's try to keep our patience a little bit. So I'm just going to move this a little bit higher, somewhere here. Bring this merge node down, and this media out node to the side again. I thought we'd have enough room here, but apparently we don't. So here we are. Just a second. If it's green, that means it's processing, but it takes a while to process. So I'm going to do Control T. And I'm going to set this to screen. And the thing is, we want to go to frame zero, make the blend one. Right click, select animate, or you can click on the diamond button and go to frame about maybe 24, maybe a little bit further. If you're going 24 from the second, and I'm going to bring this down. 
So we're going to have to smooth out the splines later, but that's not an issue to deal with right now. We should maybe we should have moved that a little bit further. So one more thing is the scales. Eh, scales. Embers. And I'm going to merge that here. Yeah, now the playback is getting quite slow, so we better better move quickly. So control T to bring the embers on top. Once again, we're going to bring this to screen. Yeah, so we have this. Might want to bring the size of the merge a little bit higher. So we don't have that many of these things flying around. And also we are going to bring the opacity maybe here. We're going to animate and at frame no oh, here we should make it zero and at frame zero we should make it one all right almost there one more thing we're going to add is a lens distort node oh sorry lens distort and this tool is very tricky has lots of settings that you don't want to mess with so i'm going to go to the beginning because that's where we want our distortion to be the most we're going to go to the lens distortion model and and we are going to bring down the distortion not that far not to the point that we have these black edges but something like that anamorphic squeeze we can squeeze it like that no like that and we should probably animate this by now animate yeah sorry i thought fusion i thought the resolve was about to crash so control s to save in case it does crash and yeah we bring yeah we bring down the anamorphic squeeze like this also set a key here and that's basically it so we're going to go to frame six and we should probably remove this from the viewer when we're doing this because this is actually very, very, very fragile thing. So we just have to make sure that our keyframes are still there, which they aren't. So we don't remember the value, so we actually have to look at it. Now we have the keyframes, I can see, but it looks like we should do a little bit more distortion, just a slight amount. Even if you have a little bit of this black, don't worry, we can clean this up later. So control S again, just in case this crashes. So last thing we're going to add is a DVE. I'm going to add that. And here at frame zero, we're going to go to the Z move. We're going to animate this and we're going to bring this to the back. It basically moves your virtual camera forward. I'm just gonna move with a little control and move it forward so I can see something. And at frame six, I believe should be fine to bring it back to where it was. Yeah. And that's about it. We can add a few more details. We don't want this to crash, so I should probably pre-render this or not. So one thing we could add before these two nodes, because these two are the, I'm just gonna disconnect for now, because these two are very, the ones that almost caused this to, the whole thing to crash. So I'm going to add a X glow node, and you know this is my favorite fuse. You can get this on Reactor. Those who follow this channel know that this is a very, and honestly, we shouldn't even put this here. We should put this after the text, the first text, the this one. So we're gonna look at that. Bring down the gain by a lot. This is a very nice glow, I really like it. So I'm just going to unlock X, Y, and we go towards the end, the frame maybe about 40. No, we'll go to frame six. It doesn't matter, you don't have to be precise with all of this stuff. So I'm gonna bring down the Y size, and I'm gonna bring up the X size. So this might be a little bit too much. 
so we just look at it it creates this sort of glare and in the gradient we can set the color on one end for it to be red and on the other end for it to be blue it's not that we see much so we might want to bring up the gain slightly yeah so here it is i think it looked better when it was white i'm just gonna bring this to the white white and blue actually this is a very nice looking thing it's like almost like a squint look so i'm gonna bring the gain to zero and about frame 72 we're going to bring the gain back to the where it was that's a bit too much actually so i'm gonna bring this down yeah so that's actually basically it the only thing left now is to we'll see what we have in our final shot yeah that's very nice this one could use a little bit more color correction and could also use less gain for this thing yeah a lot less so i'm gonna make it zero point one that should be fine now the last thing we should we're going to do is we're going to connect this back but we're not going to view it we're going to open our spline window first i'm just going to move this to the side we're going to open our spline window and smooth out everything that we got everything that we animated we animated a lot of things today so we have this text one character spacing and we have this text one copy character spacing which is almost the same I'm just going to click fit and as you can see this one just starts a little bit lower and ends a little bit lower i'm just going to make it fit i'm going to select this full screen button and select all of our keyframes shift s I'm just going to select these two uh, shift s so that should be about fine we should want it to ease in and ease out all right that's the first two now for the x glow gain we're going to go here and we're going to animate this also. It's already animated. We're going to select both of the keyframes, Shift S, make it smooth, ease in, ease out. This is similar to the graph editor in After Effects. It basically has the same purpose. So Shift S this as well. And I'm going to unselect that. All the blends, we want to smooth out the splines. So I'm just going to. This takes a little while, but you can definitely notice the results in the final rendered product. So I'm just going to select all of our keyframes, Shift S. Now this was the easier part. The last two things that we want, and we want to smooth the splines, actually need to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to select one for now, the distortion, just the distortion, and I'm going to fit this to the screen. Now we want this Shift S. We want this to be very sorry select the keyframes again we want this to be very abrupt in the beginning and then slow down like sort of explosive move move out like it just like flies out of there like the camera so usually what most people would do they would actually use a 3d camera make an image plane for every single thing and that takes forever i mean you have to you can't just put everything on an image plane you have to make space between the planes scale the planes and it's actually very annoying. And sometimes you have artifacts in the 3D render, which you don't want. So I'm just going to select the, the, store, the anamorphic squeeze now, and I'm going to select this again. Shift S, make it an abrupt move in, explosive move in, and I'm just going to pull this like that. As far as it goes, basically. So just gonna go, and then towards the end, slow down. But this is a very short animation over the course of like, what is it? Six frames we did this. And the last thing, the Z move. Shift S, should probably fit this to the screen. Also needs to be very dynamic. Move in, and towards the end, it needs to slow down. Yeah, so that's basically it. The last thing we need to do, we're going to close our spline window. Control S this time instead of Shift S. 
and we are going to move this into our media out node. Since this is a very heavy comp and well, not very heavy, I mean, for the Vint Resolve, it's heavy. For Fusion standalone, this wouldn't be this wouldn't be that much at all. So we could probably have done this in 4K in the less amount of time. So what I would recommend, instead of using the media out node, you should probably use a saver node. And you just search SV, and that's your saver node. I'm going to add one of those. Not here. It needs to be after the last node. Basically, it's like instead of the media out node. So in the saver, you'd have to browse for the file name. So when you browse, you have to make sure that your file name ends in the format that you want it to be. So if you have anything with transparency, you would make it .png. That would be title.png. It has to be in the name of your, has to be the format extension has to be in the name of the image. Because in Fusion Standalone, we would have just like a simple, simple thing here. You would just scroll down and select the format. Here, it's set to EXR by default. And a lot of people I noticed don't know how to change the default. And including myself until recently, I didn't know how to change the default in Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. And it's very annoying because EXRs are very, very heavy image files. You basically, if you want to pre-render something to make it move smoother, to make it go faster, EXR isn't your best choice. EXRs are image files that contain a lot of data. They contain Z data of the depth. They contain transparency. They contain um, normals. And these are things that you don't need for regular, for regular images. For regular images, you just need red, green, blue, RGB. And sometimes you need alpha. But uh, EXR, it's only for like very heavy projects where you need to pre-render and you need to preserve your normals and your depth and the U, U and V. And there are a lot of channels there that you, that you probably don't need for an everyday basis. So you just like that JPEG if you want. You have, um, there are different file names. There are different file types that you can use. But I think JPEG is the most common and you won't see much of a difference because either way if you're uploading to youtube the compression rates there are not that bad but still you won't you'll be you won't be able to tell the difference between jpeg and say i don't know well exr that's a completely different story and, and a better file type so jpeg is probably your best bet even though when it comes to photography i'm not pro jpeg at all so so yeah thanks for watching this tutorial if you enjoyed this please like share subscribe and i'll see you in my next tutorial and if you have any tutorial requests that you would like any tutorials that you would like to see any suggestions i'm open to suggestions any anything please write in the comments below i really appreciate when i get lots of comments so thanks see you next time